What's going on, everybody? Liam here, Everything NYJ, back with another video for you. It is going to be a very long week for the NFL. The Combine is right around the corner. Free agency is right around the corner. And this could also potentially be a very big week for the New York Jets. We can finally, after weeks and months of speculation, find out who our veteran quarterback is going to be moving into the 2023 season. And a hundred different names have been thrown out there from Jacoby Brissett, Gardner Minshew, uh, Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill, Lamar Jackson, hundreds of names. But the two biggest names that keep popping up for the New York Jets are Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers. So I figured what I would kind of do here is just uh, break down Derek Carr versus Aaron Rodgers to kind of see, in my opinion, it's only my opinion, but to see who the best quarterback fit would be for the New York Jets moving forward. So I broke it down to a couple different categories. I think it'll be fun. I've been wanting to do this for a while now. So let's get into it. So Derek Carr versus Aaron Rodgers. The first thing to look into, in my opinion, is the compensation, right? What is it going to take uh, to get to get these guys? What are the New York Jets going to have to give up to land these guys? We'll start off with Derek Carr. Derek Carr, as we all know, is a free agent. He's rumored to cost around $35 million a year. And uh, the New York Jets do not have to give up any draft picks, any draft compensation, because he is a free agent. And we already know that Derek Carr met with the New York Jets, and everybody's saying that it went really well. It was a very positive. The New York Jets view Derek Carr as a quarterback that can lead them to a championship, and they actually believe that he can be a Hall of Fame quarterback. Now, those are just rumors. That's just speculation. It's not like the New York Jets are going to come out and say uh, Derek Carr sucks and they don't want to touch him with a 10-foot pole following, you know, following this meeting. Um, but is it possible that Derek Carr is just using the Jets as leverage? Uh, yes, because, I mean, there's plenty of other teams out there that need a quarterback. It's not just the New York Jets. You know, he's been linked to the Saints. Uh, the Panthers have apparently been out on him. The Saints actually, I mean, there's a ton of different ports. The Saints are saying that they're out on him, but who really knows? I mean, the Buccaneers could use a quarterback. A ton of other teams can use a quarterback. With Aaron Rodgers, on the other hand, you're going to have to give up draft compensation, most likely the 2023 first-round draft pick, which is 13th overall, uh, probably the 2024 first-round draft pick, and probably more than that. And not only that, um, Aaron Rodgers comes with a $60 million cap hit, and potentially he might not be able to be traded until June 1st, depending on what the Packers want to do, Aaron Rodgers coming out of this darkness uh, retreat, just because uh, possibly he makes up his mind, he knows what he wants to do, you know, because he's been saying, I don't know if I want to play, I don't know if I want to be traded, or if I just want to straight up retire, or maybe I want to run it back one more year with Green Bay. We don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to say. We will most likely find out tomorrow on the Pat McAfee show, as he's there every single Tuesday. But just because Aaron Rodgers has made up his mind doesn't mean that he immediately needs to come out into the public and say what he wants to do. He doesn't have to come out on Pat McAfee and say, yes, I want to be traded. Yes, I want to play for the green and white in New York. Or yes, I do. You know, he doesn't have to say any of this. Just because he, he made up his mind doesn't mean that he has to publicly, uh, publicly announce it just yet. But uh, so that's just, you know, something to keep your eye on the compensation. Uh, the other thing that I want to look at is the time played on the team. How long are these guys going to be here? I don't really want just a one-year Band-Aid, and that's something that I fear with Aaron Rodgers, that he only has one to three years left uh, possibly in his tank. He's constantly knocking on the door of retirement. We're constantly questioning, is this Aaron Rodgers last year? So j just you know, with Aaron Rodgers giving up all this draft compensation, I don't necessarily want to do it for uh, one year, if if anything, I'm not doing for anything less than two years. If you if he only wants to play for one more year, I'm out. I don't want to do the deal, uh, plain and simple. Somebody like Derek Carr, he's 31 years old. I think that Derek Carr could be a quarterback that's here uh, anywhere really from three to five plus years. Uh, he's still young, relatively young, so he does have a lot of uh, tread left on his tile uh, tires. A lot of you know just. Mileage. Derek Carr can go for the next couple of years, where Aaron Rodgers, at any point, you don't know when it's going to be his last season. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on there. Um, another thing, or what are the Jets' Super Bowl odds? You know, if they do 
land one of these quarterbacks because that's essentially what this is. Uh, Woody Johnson has come out in the past and publicly said the Jets need a veteran quarterback. And I personally believe that the Jets are just a veteran quarterback away from being serious contenders in the NFL. They have tons of uh, weapons around them. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Sauce, AVT, Elijah Moore. You guys know the deal. You guys know all the stars on the team. Um, but just with these Super Bowl odds, you know, Derek Carr does not have a good postseason record. He's actually 0-2, losing both in 2016 and in 2021. Is that necessarily all of his fault? No. Derek Carr, five different uh, head coaches, multiple different offensive assistants, multiple players coming in and out. He has never played with a good defense. That is all stuff to factor in. Derek Carr not playing great in the cold. Is that a concern? We don't really know. Aaron Rodgers, 11 wins, 10 losses in the postseason, 1-0 and in the Super Bowl, and actually a Super Bowl MVP in 2011. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on, right? There is some weight that's held with that. Aaron Rodgers just elevates the players around him. He does. He does. Whether he has a great team around him or if it was like a season like this past season where it's just like a lot of young players on the rise, Aaron Rodgers does seem to get the most out of his players. Where Derek Carr, he's never really had a complete team around him. He's had talent. You know, he's had Waller. He's had Ruggs, uh, Cooper, Amari Cooper, Devontae Adams. Just name a few. You know, he's had plenty of other playmakers besides that. But it just never seems like success has come Derek Carr's way. At least not yet. Not to say that things can't change in the future. Not to say that possibly a scene, uh, change of scenery would not be best for him. But what do you guys think about that? Another thing that I wanted to touch on is the competitive drive. When a quarterback is released by a team or traded or cut, normally they're pretty pissed off. Teams don't just let go of players for the heck of it in most cases, unless it really becomes like a cap casualty issue, which we have seen multiple times in the past. But that doesn't really happen typically with a franchise quarterback. So starting off with Derek Carr, is he going to be upset? Is he going to be pissed off? that Las Vegas uh, wronged him, which they sure did. They don't view him as the guy. He's had personal issues with the head coach in the past, McDaniels. So this could all be stuff that, like, yeah, Derek Carr wants to go out there and prove himself. And I don't blame him. Derek Carr is going to be a pissed-off quarterback that they didn't. the Raiders did not believe in him, and he has been with the Raiders through thick and thin nine seasons as their starting quarterback. So he feels wronged. I mean – there was a possibility that the Raiders could have traded Derek Carr, but Derek Carr, of course, had that no trade clause in his contract. So he didn't want to help Las Vegas in any way, which I don't blame him. You know, he's saying, no, 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 you're not going to get any draft picks out of me. You're not going to get anything back when I leave. I am saying I will refuse to be traded and I'm going to become a free agent. I'm going to uh, link with every team that needs a quarterback, every team that shows interest in me. I'm going to talk it all out and see what the best deal for me possibly is and that is exactly what Derek Carr did but see the thing with Aaron Rodgers is he has that Joe Cool kind of mentality where nothing really seems to upset him you know he kind of just uh, marches to the beat of his own drum but I don't know if he's going to be playing for fun or if he's going to be angry that Green Bay does not view him as the same super ball uh, super star super bowl caliber quarterback that he once was I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I don't know if that is actually how they feel, but they did draft his replacement. So they knew a couple years ago that, hey, Aaron's getting up there in age. We're not sure if he's going to be able to produce the same that he has in the past. So let's go bring in a guy like Jordan Love. And now the time is coming where you're eventually going to have to either pay Jordan Love or you're going to have to move on from him. So Green Bay, I mean, I get it. They're going to go at least one full season with Jordan Love to see what he is. He has shown flashes in the past, but he's never really had that opportunity to play a full 17 games, possibly more. You don't really know what you have in him, and you have to figure that out before you can move on from him or pay him. But that is essentially why you drafted a guy like Jordan Love, because you saw something in him. You saw him as your possible uh, starter of the future, and it seems like the Green Bay Packers are finally getting to that point. So Aaron Rodgers, you know, in the past he has missed uh, OTAs, which they are voluntary, so you can't completely blame him for that. And in the past, you know, he's known LaFleur's offense, he's known Hackett's offense, um, he's known McCarthy's offense. 
is he going to want to come here to the New York Jets? Is he going to pull that same stunt where he doesn't show up to OTAs? Is that a red flag for you? Is that a concern? Because this is... I mean, Aaron Rodgers doesn't need to be there for offensive installs all the time. He knows what the offense is. But coming to the Jets, you're going to want to build chemistry with your new teammates. You're going to want to get to know guys like Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, uh, Elijah Moore. You're going to want to get to know these guys. You're going to want to figure out the Jets' defense. You know, let me go up against Sauce Gardner every day. Go up against DJ Reed every day. Go, you know, the linebackers, Quinn and Williams, the D-line. He's going to want to get familiar with all these guys. You know, he's going to want to get to know uh, Robert Sala, how his practices operate. Not to say that I don't believe Der- uh, Aaron Rodgers. I almost said Derek Carr. Two different quarterbacks. I don't know if Aaron Rodgers – I don't think, at least, that Aaron Rodgers is not going to be able to figure out this offense, especially with Nathaniel Hackett as OC. It's probably going to be something that he has already seen in the past. But it's not necessarily a red flag for me. But that does kind of show, in a sense, that maybe he's not all in, which is something I am concerned about. I gem- I genuinely am. If you're going to be giving up all this draft compensation, if you're going to be paying him top dollar, I want a quarterback that is 100% dedicated, committed to the team. He's going to be there for everything, from OTAs all the way into the playoffs, hopefully, fingers crossed, the Super Bowl. So that is possibly a concern of mine that maybe he's just not as motivated as he's been in the past. But on the other hand, maybe he's more motivated than he's been in the past because he was never uh, traded or let go from a team. So the last thing that I want to talk about, or one of the second to last thing I want to talk about here, is Nathaniel Hackett's offense. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers gets a hand up because Nathaniel Hackett possibly got the most out of Aaron Rodgers. Uh, back-to-back MVPs in 2020 and 2021. Um, just incredible numbers under Nathaniel Hackett. He's come out publicly and said that he really likes Nathaniel Hackett. And it, like I said, it's a, it's a system that he's already familiar with. He's played in this, possibly his best football, where Nathaniel Hackett kind of runs that West Coast offense. Do I think Derek Carr could flourish in this offense? Absolutely. Like I said in the past, maybe the change of scenery is what's best for him. A fresh voice in his ear. But we're not sure. We haven't seen this yet. So I got to give the upper hand here to Aaron Rodgers. Like I said, not to say, uh, not to discount discount Derek Carr, not to you know belittle him by any chance. We've just never seen him in this offense before. We've never seen him and Nathaniel Hackett work together. The thing I do like, is the Jets also brought in Todd Downing, who has the ha- uh, the history, the past with Derek Carr. So that could play a factor right there as well. The last thing, very last thing I want to talk about here, and I'm serious this time, attracting other players. What other players are going to want to come here if the Jets do sign a Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers? The Jets have quite a few holes on their team, wide receiver, you know, they could always use another wide receiver, especially if they're going to let uh, Corey Davis and or Braxton Berrios go. They need depth on the offensive line like nobody's business. I have a lot of faith that Makai Becton could be coming back. You know, he looks to be in the best shape possibly of his life. But you can't just hand him a starting job. So there's other players that the Jets are going to have to bring in. They're going to have to restructure a lot of deals, especially to get Aaron Rodgers done. But I'm not really quite sure what other players are going to want to come here to play with Derek Carr. I'm sure there's definitely players out there that do see value in him, that think that maybe they could elevate their career playing with somebody like a Derek Carr. But no really big names actually come to mind. There's not really a lot of connections out there linking Derek Carr with another player. Where with Aaron Rodgers, you know, we could be bringing in an Alan Lazard to replace a Corey Davis. You know, he's a big body wide receiver. He's a young guy just a player on the rise. He might want to continue that continuity with Aaron Rodgers, at least for the next couple of years. And that could be a familiar face that Aaron Rodgers, you know, he's possibly the Packers best wide receiver right now. You know, he has a good connection with Alan Lazard. That might be a dynamic duo that wants to come to New York together. Another wide receiver is the veteran Randall Cobb, who Aaron Rodgers hangs out with the other Younger players on the uh, Packers get upset that Aaron Rodgers doesn't really hang out with them, but he does hang out with Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb is up there in age. Do I want him personally? No. 
but it's not up to me. If Joe Douglas values somebody like a Randall Cobb and Aaron Rodgers says, yes, I do want to come to you, but I would also like to bring in somebody like a Randall Cobb, you got to wonder if Joe Douglas would say no to that or not. And the other one is Dave Batiari, the offensive tackle. The Jets need the offensive line depth like nobody's business. We saw that firsthand last year. The offensive line was just a complete mess, especially when AVT went down. And before AVT went down, you know, he was all up and down that offensive line. I have been actually calling him the Joe Klecko of the offensive line. He should have been a Pro Bowl, or if he does not get injured, I do think he would be one. But they're possibly going to meet uh, to need a tackle. They're going to, you know, we don't know if Dwayne Brown is going to be coming back. We don't know, you know, Lakin Tomlinson didn't really hold his weight last year. George Fant had a down year, so the Jets could definitely use an upgrade on the offensive line. And I think somebody like Batiari uh, definitely elevates that offensive line. So that's going to wrap it up for me. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with this? Do you guys have any other um, just categories that I missed out on that you guys would like to see? Uh, just kind of going through all of this, it almost seems like Aaron Rodgers is the best option, although you do have to give up the compensation to get him. Am I going to be upset if we get Derek Carr? Absolutely not. I like Derek Carr as well. I think I was a little too low on him in the past couple of weeks, but he is starting to grow on me. I'm going to be happy with either uh, either decision. Like I said, more costly to give up uh, for somebody like an Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers is the more known commodity. He's more of the veteran, more of a superstar, more winning than somebody like a Derek Carr. But maybe Derek Carr just needs that restart button. Maybe he just needs a change of scenery. Maybe the Jets figure that they can get the most out of Derek Carr and Derek Carr can get the most out of the New York Jets. Maybe it's a marriage waiting to happen. I don't really know at this point. Like I said, hopefully this deal gets done this week. Hopefully we ha- that we finally have some answers because it's starting to get tiring. It really is. You know, it's every day, you know, one reporter says this and then the other reporter says that. Oh my God, Aaron Rodgers took a shower today, so maybe he's coming to the Jets. It's just all these crazy scenarios that I just, as a Jets fan, it's tiring. I just want to figure out who my quarterback is going to be this way we can go into free agency with a plan we could go into the draft with a plan and we could really move forward with our off season because our off season just seems to be surrounded non-stop by uh the quarterback you know jimmy garoppolo Derek carr aaron Rodgers, lamar jackson baker mayfield jacoby Brissett. you guys know all the names that have been floated out there some of them are more realistic than others in my opinion it just seems like Derek carr and aaron Rodgers have been the two most talked about ones. The New York Jets actually are already meeting with Derek Carr. So let me know what you guys think. Who do you guys want as a quarterback, that veteran quarterback moving forward for the New York Jets? If you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, I know it's been a little lengthy. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much. Let me know in the comments section who you guys want. If you guys did find anything uh, useful on this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you're new here, we love having you. Please smash that uh, subscribe button. We have live podcasts every Wednesday night. Me and my co-host, Italy Jet. We always bring on a wonderful guest, and we just continue to talk Jets. We have daily Jets content. Follow us on all social media platforms, Everything NYJ, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, of course, YouTube. That's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Liam here, Everything NYJ. We'll talk Jets soon.